the newest set, TCG set, Paradox Rift. So right now, right now it's like a review of this item. So um, on Japanese Pokemon Center, they've got, they've had this item for Raging Surf, of course. Uh, Raging Surf has a few mascots, including Goldingo, including the Garchomp EX, the Terra Water one, which is really cool. I like the Terra cards because I like the mechanic. They also have, so this deck box comes with, um, it does not come with the sleeves. They also had sleeves that you could get, but it does come with these, you know, that's nice. Um, but yeah, you can get yourself like a cool reflective gold dango, um, some sleeves from there. But I want to speak more on, here is finally English Gimmigool that I've got now. I've got this like Goldango deck and it's not prepared fully because I don't have all the cards obviously. Um, I've got stand-ins <laughs> and you know, so for example, I've got the Japanese Goldango um, and the Japanese Gimmigool, but these guys are really exciting. This Gimmigool, there's two of them and this one has Call for Family. You can search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto the bench, shuffle your deck. It's good for getting the other gimmick ghouls down. Um, obviously, you're going to want to get some gimmick ghouls down so that you can get Goldango in play. Goldango is a great card that, you know, and these Japanese cards are really cute, cool because they're different. I mean, they've got little like stars and different like sparkle kind of shine to them. So they're really neat. Um, but yeah, but he's got an ability where you can draw a card, I believe, each turn. And if he's in the active spot, you can do two. Um, so this is excellent kind of draw and whatnot. And it is a steel type, which is pretty cool, metal energy. And then its attack is also insane. So I believe it's 50 for each energy you discard. And it can be any energy. And I really want to, like, try pairing him with Qian Pao because I love... Chin Pao a lot, and I love Chin Pao's ability to like gather energy, of course. So Chin Pao, like I said, has the ability Shivery Chill that allows you to get two basic water energy from your deck. And essentially you'd be able to hopefully get some water energy, maybe get a bunch in your hand, um, to where you can then swap into Goldango or something and then discard them to do a lot of damage you stuff like that so that's the game plan kind of thing i suppose um bax caliber here can also you know attach but with goldengo you'd probably want to like, keep them in hand and discard and stuff but that's that's that i mean the chin power is kind of an awkward one we'll see what happens um but as it as it is on its own i think goldengo ex has a lot of potential um, and I think other people have obviously noticed as well. So like I said, here is one gimmick ghoul. This gimmick ghoul is the, obviously the special illustration of it, um, but it is the one with two retreat cost. There are two Goldango. This is the one with one retreat cost. This Goldango has the call for family and everything. It's 50 HP. This one is 70 HP. So there's decisions to make here. Let me see. I think I have the English now of the other one so that we can take a look. Here we go. And then Jirachi is also in the Paradox Rift set. It was in the Raging Surf set. This is the new Jirachi that allows you to prevent damage counters from being placed on your bench Pokemon by effects of attacks used by your opponent's basic Pokemon. So that is, you know, I think most people are thinking the Sableye, the Lost Box counter. Um, and I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> But no, so here is the 70 HP regular Goldango. Um, and then he's got Continuous Coin Toss, which is a move where you flip a coin until you get tails, and the attack does $20 damage for each heads. So yeah, so this is Goldango. I think it's really fun and cool. Like I said, Japan got it first. It's been out. Um, and Paradox Rift has, you know, two sets like usual. It's got the um, Raging Surf and the Ancient Roar and Future Flash. Ancient Roar and Future Flash in Japan comes out October 27th, so this is still early even for Japan. So yeah, let's look at some more cards that we can find in Paradox Rift and what kind of things 
or have been noticed so far, <laughs> you know? And we can talk about Veluza real fast. So Veluza is coming in the set. I believe I've got two of these or so, um, but sadly not the illustration rare of it. That one looks insane with it being filleted and stuff. That's really funny. I really like that card. But no, so Veluza has the ability Filet Memento, um, which if it's in the active spot and is knocked out by damage from via an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, move up to two base uh, water energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. That's cool, but then Hydro Pump has got this attack does 20 more damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. So once again, if you can just load up energy using Bax Calibur, um, that main draw for just loading on water energy, that would be ideal. And then, like I said, I think it's it can find a place maybe in Chi and Pao, and I think that would be really exciting. But yeah, we're going to probably see more on how this is going to get utilized, but I think it's really cool already, and it's nice to see. Look at them! They're just bikes! They're bikes! I love it! That's it. I'm so happy to have this one. It's great. So coming out of Paradox Rift, there's two decks in particular I am super excited about. Um, and the cards that I'm super excited about, and that is, of course, Roaring Moon and Iron Valiant, the, like, co-stars of this set, you know, that is the main, those are the main ones, and I want to see especially how they might play out in a deck. So, once again, I've got one for each, I've got some cards we can look at, um, and talk about maybe how we can implement them. That We've got Flittle here for 50 HP, and that's pretty, you know, it's it's a little guy. We're going to evolve it. We're, once we evolve a Spathra, um, it says Stance. Its ability is Stance. And when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may prevent all damage from it and and effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to this Pokemon until the end of your opponent's next turn. So that's very interesting. The ideal strategy, I guess, would be to hold off and then, you know, evolve and have that go on. But then the attack Glittering Eyes for two energy does 70, but if Tulip is in your discard pile, this attack does 70 more damage. So Tulip is already an awesome supporter, I think, and it did a lot of damage just with that. Tulip here has put four up to four in any combination of psychic Pokemon and basic po psychic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. So super fantastic. Like I said, you can swing for 140 with this bath row with Tulip in the discard pile. That's really cool. I really like that. I think that is a super interesting ability and thing going on. The next one that people are excited about is, of course, Natu and Zatu. So Natu here is nothing too crazy, of course, it's just the basic. Um, but then once we evolve into Natu, the ability Clairvoyant Sense comes into play, and we can look at that ability. So once during your turn, you may attach a basic Psychic Energy from your hand to one of your benched Pokémon. And if you do attach energy in this way, draw two cards so once again this is also an amazing card i would say because you're able to attach to benched pokemon and extra energy and then you're just drawing more as well so that's super cool i think if you're running iron valiant it's not a bad idea to go ahead and try and bring in you know your natu and zatu for more draw support and things like that i think that should be i mean maybe don't add this much i just this is just what i have offhand um like i said this is not a serious deck or anything like that really it's just to show off things um and of the future pokemon uh i got a chance to look at iron bundle and he was also very helpful because of his ability hyper blower once during your turn if this pokemon is on your bench you may switch it out you you may switch out your opponent's active pokemon to your the bench your opponent chooses the new active Pokemon, and if you do, discard this Pokemon and all attached cards. So this was a way to, you know, you can have him on the bench, use it to like bring someone else up, and then, you know, discard and stuff. And at first it might not seem like much, but it really helped, especially with the Tulip and Espathra. It was nice to force them to bring up a Pokemon that could be, 
you know, KO'd for 140. Like I said, this was just kind of a pre-release baby game, so it, I don't think, like, it's that killer when it comes to a big deck, but I could be wrong. But I think the main lure could be with Iron Valiant. And once again, like I said, I don't have these cards yet, so I've got, like, placeholders, and then they look very silly and whatnot, and they're obviously not meant for actual play other than, like, practice and stuff. Um, but Iron Valiant is the big card. Its ability, Tycheon Bits, I don't know how to say it still, tech. Uh, you'll have to let me know. But once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may put two damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. So the strategy here with this is switching. We're gonna switch a lot. And we're gonna switch, do damage, have that going on, and then it also has a powerful attack with Laser Blade for 3 energy, 200 damage, and during your next turn, your Pokemon can't attack. So we have that one, um, and like I said, Escape Rope can probably be pretty useful for it, as well as Switch Cart being the main one. I've seen, yeah, yeah, I think that can be perfect. And yeah, since it is a basic, you can just search it out with a Nest Ball or something, that's really helpful. Um, you can also grab energy using, you know, the fog crystal and stuff to grab some psychic energy. There was a few times when I was playing through this, I had some help with Mew. Mew was good. That's also another Pokemon that can be grabbed. Um, and with, that's very helpful. So there's a lot going on here that can happen. And I just really like it. So that's the kind of the idea there. Um, the other future Pokemon, I kind of just put it in. I, I don't think he's... I don't know, but we have Iron Jugulus coming, and Iron Jugulus is also an interesting guy. Um, check it out. Check out all that energy. His other attack, Bi Baryon Beam, Byron Beam. <laughs> um, if it's if it has the future booster energy capsule attached, it you can use the attack for three energy. It's whatever. This card, I think, is whatever. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, though. But it, yeah, it seems so. Um, and then, of course, we have Tulip and stuff. Another new item would be the Counter Catcher. You can use this card only if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. Switch one of your opponent's benched Pokemon to the active spot. Also really fantastic. It's like an item boss and stuff. I can't wait for that. I think that's cool. Once again, we have Tulip, and she is great for getting that Psychic Pokemon as well as basic energy, psychic energy, to then let not to accelerate and everything. Another new one we have is the uh, Techno Radar. So these are what you're going to use to find your future Pokemon. Find your Iron Valiant, find your Iron Bundle, etc. Whatever you're kind of thinking. Um, Iron Hand, stuff like that. So this one states, you can use this card only if you discard another card from your hand, you search your deck for two future Pokemon and reveal them and then put them in your hand and shuffle your deck. Fantastic way to easily find those future Pokemon. I think that is wonderful. Another key card in the future Pokemon deck would be the future booster energy capsule. Uh, once again, this has been anticipated and it's fantastic. The future Pokemon this card is attached to has no retreat cost. The attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon as well. That's pretty crazy. And I really like their free retreat cost, all that stuff as well. Um, for example, you know, you can attach it to Iron Valiant, who does a lot of switching, and that's going to make it even more powerful so that every time it comes into the active, you can put down two damage counters and continue to do so. So it's just another way to do that, as well as do more damage. It's pretty cool. I've got one net right now and we'll need some more, but that is pretty vital for the deck, I would say. Um, you're gonna wanna use those. Another thing, new thing, not new to the TCG, but new to the set, I guess, are the technical machines. These are interesting. They are very interesting to me, at least, because I have not used TMs before in the Pokemon TCG and they look pretty cool. So we have ones that are kind of straightforward and cool like Evolution. 
which allows you to choose two of your bench Pokemon, and for each of them, search your deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon and put that Pokemon, put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it and then shuffle your deck. So I really like this, maybe using it, especially if you're doing like Natu and stuff. You can look for that Zatu and get it hopefully evolved a little faster, is what I would imagine. Um, there is also de-evolution. De-evolution states that you can de-evolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon by putting the highest stage evolution card on it into your opponent's hand. That's pretty cool. I think that's pretty good for like a little bit of disruption, but mostly I think you can de-evolve them to then knock them out a lot easier since the de-evolved Pokemon would have a lot less HP and you would get the knockout and stuff on that, um, is how I believe I think is it's happening. And this one, Turbo Energize, is also really cool, really helpful. Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. Then shuffle. That's also another great way to find energy. I think that's awesome. And then we have a TM that, like, attacks, okay? So this one costs three energy compared to the one energy of all the others. But if you've got the energy for it, of course, the attack does 100 damage to your opponent's Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So once again, I think that's pretty awesome with um, Iron Valiant, of course, as well, because it does put down a lot of damage counters every time it swings into the active like that. So that is another consideration to have into the deck and whatnot. That's going to be pretty important and whatnot. I am excited for that. We've also got, you know, the new supporters of Earth, of course. Look at the top four cards of your deck, put two of them in your hand, shuffle the other cards, put them at the bottom of your deck. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, and the last thing is, I think I just want to mention Arvin coming in handy for these things. I think in these decks might be useful because Arvin lets you search your deck for an item card and a tool card. Reveal them, put them in your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So you're able to find a lot of the new tools, and we have a lot of new tools. We have the, you know, not only the booster energy thing, um, but we have the technical machines, we have different things like that. There's a new thing that I think attaches, and you can get much more, or get some less damage. But let's look at Roaring Moon, okay? That's one I'm excited for. So, with Roaring Moon, um, we've got Dark Pokemon, and I have this. Look at this! <laughs> I got this at the, um, obviously the event and stuff, and, uh, I'm really glad I pulled it, but it's very cute. Um, I'm really glad that I think this is gonna end up being, like, a $10 card, very, or under 10 I mean. Like, very cheap, so that everybody can, like, get it, because look at that, that's wonderful. Morpeko here has the ability that if this Pokemon has no energy attached to it, it has no retreat cost. And then it's got Energizer Wheel for two dark energy. You can move two dark energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. And I guess it also does 70. So that's kind of cool. Again, nothing like wild, but I just wanted to show it off. <laughs> and then um, in this, I've got, you know, Blindside I think could be useful could be helpful trying to get that. Um, dark Patch. I don't have Dark... <laughs> I just, I need to pick some up. They're, they're out and everything. I just need to pick some up. I think I have one in here, a Japanese one, but, um, but with Roaring Moon, you're gonna be able to use Dark Patch because, uh, you're gonna need to attach the energy and stuff. Um, the new supporter, Sada, is also gonna be super important, I would say. Um, let me find her other little crude drawings I've done. Same with Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon being a basic EX Pokemon. You've got him here. And we have Frenzied Gouging is the main big attack. Frenzied Gouging is, says that you can knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. Like, period. Just knock it out. But, if your opponent's active is knocked out in that way, the Pokemon does 200 damage to itself. Which is like, ah, oh, scary, but <laughs> don't worry, there are ways to heal it up back very quickly, including playing the Emergency Jelly. Here we go. So Emergency Jelly here would be ideal in the deck. At the end of each turn, if the Pokemon this card is attached to has 30 HP or remaining, has any damage counter, or, and has any damage counters on it, heal 120 damage from it. 
And then if you healed any damage in this way, you would discard this card. So this is your way to get back a lot of health and stuff after you do this big KO. Single KO. Very powerful. Um, I have Squawk in here because that could be kind of useful. Squawk and Seize and whatnot. You can also put in Galarian Moltres with its ability Malevolent Charge. This one states that when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto the bench, during your turn, you may attach up to two Dark Energy cards from your hand to the Pokemon. And then Fiery Wrath, F yeah, Fury Wrath, Fiery, it has three energy cost, um, but it lets you attack and do 50 damage more for each prize card your opponent has taken. So this is a good thing that might swing out late game, I would assume, and that could be pretty helpful for you. Let's see, what else? We got another Roaring Moon here. All the funny drawings. But yeah, but we've got Sada, of course. So the Sada would be great. It's this new supporter that says, Choose up to two ancient Pokemon and attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of them. And if you attach any energy in this way, draw three cards. Once again, very powerful to not only attach energy, but then to get more cards out of your deck. That's really awesome. And then the booster of the past is also available. I don't have it yet, but um, the ancient Pokemon this is, card is attached to gets 60 HP plus more than, yeah. And then it recovers from all special conditions and it can be affected by special conditions. So obviously if you attach it to Roaring Moon, you're doing what, 60 plus 30 is not, you're, it's 290 now. Um, and then you're safe from the um, special conditions and whatnot. And then the new item that's very influential is gonna be the Earth Vessel. And that item says you can play this card only if you discard another card from your hand, search your deck for up to two basic energy cards, reveal them and put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Once again, just a way to like draw in more energy and that's gonna be really helpful too. I've got another one of that. Um, and then once again, Arvin is going to be super helpful in the deck as well because he's going to allow you to find an item and a tool card and of course like I mentioned there's a lot of tool cards and it's going to be really fun. I really can't wait to see how the uh, meta develops and how these decks develop as well as we go on. This was just a little 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 sneak peek I guess or just trying to explain. I know I've got silly handmade cards, but once I get those actual cards, it's always fun to swap them out, you know? Um, but until then, I hope this was helpful. Let me know your thoughts on the new set and whatnot. Let me know your thoughts on strategy or anything. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm still like a new player and whatnot, but I just wanted to share some stuff and I'm really excited. Also, bonus, this Joltik is also very special. I'm glad it, ooh, I got it because my sister loves Joltik, and this is the new Joltik. He's grabbing a blueberry. That's wonderful. There's also a Joltik illustration rare that I'll have to pick up. But yeah, thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!